Welcome, mate, to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Melfield talking to some of the big stars of Las Vegas, and we've got one for you today. A man I saw first about five or six years ago here at Planet Hollywood in the Nathan Burton Show. Well, he does a show before that, three o'clock. He's called Amanda Vieira. How are you? Very good, Alex. Thank you very much for coming. Hey, listen, you're one of those guys that was born to be here and deserves to be here, because let's face it, you've dedicated your life to this craft of magic, haven't you? That's correct. I started when I was six years old and haven't stopped since then. It's incredible. I mean, you do sort of the antithesis to these other Vegas magic shows, which are about making elephants disappear and making cars disappear. And you do the really intimate magic, this close up magic, which I happen to think is the cleverest because there's no smoke and mirrors. There's no big production. It is you and your talent and fingers, isn't it? That's correct. It's just me and a small group of people. And uh, I love it because, yeah, sleight of hand magic, as you mentioned, it's not about how spectacular it's gonna be. It's about the connection with the audience. I guess again, it's about repetition and you doing these things a hundred million times to get them perfect because you are the fastest I've ever seen at it. It's extraordinary how you do it. Do you still have to practice now or is it like a piano where once you can do it, you can probably do it forever like riding a bike? Well, no, I still have to practice because I'm changing the show constantly. So I'm always working on new illusions and of course I have to practice before I do it in front of an audience. And I guess to do it in this town is the only place to do it when you're a magician. I mean, this is the home of magic. It was born to be here. It's a shame in a way that they've sort of gone away from the special acts. I totally agree. And Las Vegas is the most magical city in the world, not only because all the attractions that it has, but but because all the magic that you can see also. So I agree with you. Now, your accent, that's not British or American. Let's let's talk about where you're from. I'm originally from Mexico City. Uh, I was born and raised in Mexico City, but my mom's family is from Italy and my dad's family is from Mexico. And then you find yourself here. Why you? How are you the guy that's managed to make it here when everybody else is doing it in basements around the world? Well, because uh, I learned at a very early age that there's nothing impossible. When I was about four years old, my mom got diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. And she was told you have six months to leave. And well, that's why I grew up being very shy and insecure but when i discovered magic it was a way for me to get out of my shell and show the people what i had inside so my dream was always to have my own show in vegas and i learned that nothing is impossible not because only because i do magic but because my mom beat the odds and she's still living today after 35 years and um, that's what i I i think i'm the one here that's an amazing story. And again, it is one of tenacity to make it in this town. You have to just keep fighting and fighting and fighting. I guess you've sort of done the opposite um, to everybody else. You've just brought yourself here and it literally is a suitcase in you and your talent. That's a great place to be because if you've got the overheads of a million dollar show, it's going to close quickly if you're not selling tickets. Whereas you, it is just your pair of hands, isn't it? That's correct. And this show, the way it's designed, there's no way we can lose money. Maybe we can break even, but we cannot lose money. So yeah, and that's one of the reasons, you know. What I love about your career as well is you're asked to do all these different events in town and indeed around the world. You've worked everywhere. Um, It was a really smart move to go your way. Was there ever a point you wanted to make tigers disappear or you wanted to make the cars? Did this sort of magic choose you or did you choose it? Well, I choose a sleight of hand magic, I believe, and it choose me because, yeah, I was involved in a very spectacular show as the production manager for a show called Spellbound here in town at Harris about 50 15, 16 years ago, and the headliner was Ayala, uh, Joaquin Ayala. He's a great magician, also from Mexico, and he's spectacular. But uh, I realized I'd rather do my sleight of hand magic because then I, I only rely on myself. I don't have to rely on other people or the animals or anything else, and I can take it everywhere and I can do it here for three people or for 200 people that's not a big deal for me and that's fantastic I mean I know when you do the bigger arenas and the bigger shows they can simply just put a camera on you now with this technology and then you fill the room so almost it works to your advantage there as well yes but and a lot of people have told me why don't you play for bigger audiences and use screens well it's because you lose that touch with the audience and you lose that one-on-one which i think that's what makes my show totally different than the other shows in town it is and it's exceptional and again what i love about it is you and your personality the act itself is fascinating because of course you've got the accent and you've got the demeanor which comes naturally that's where you're from it doesn't hurt to have that usp does it oh no it doesn't in fact yeah people remember uh, armando vera and um it's placed to my advantage because I know who I am. I know 
where I'm coming from and I try to play that as much as I can. Tell me about this town because, I mean, we were just talking before this. It's brutal here. You can have a show. It can open on Monday and it will close on Friday if it's no good. Is it a good time now to be an entertainer in Las Vegas or is it tougher than ever? It is very tough because, yes, you can rent a room and you can invest all your money. But a lot of people make the mistake that they believe if you invest in advertisement, um, billboards and just a few commercials, you're going to have an a full room and that's not the case it's very tricky out there you are competing with 120 other different shows here in town and everybody wants a piece of the pie you know how do you then get people to come in how do you get them to know about you what's the key to that success well in my case it's uh, just word of mouth that's basically how people know about my show because we don't advertise it and when people come and see the show they are like oh you got to come to see this guy you have to see the double feature program at the Saks Theatre every day at 3 o'clock with Armando first and then Nathan because it's a great combination and also going back to the overhead uh, word of mouth it's free right and it goes to your target audience so. yeah and you can't be that equally if you're rubbish you're going to be finished because people will say well that wasn't good but if you're amazing as you are that absolutely will work to your benefit yeah it's the most dangerous form of advertising it's right. the cheapest one it doesn't cost you anything but the, Again, if you are not good, it's going to spread re really fast and then you're going to be finished really quick. And I do always say this in Las Vegas, you've got to be very careful looking at the big billboards and presuming the biggest billboard is the best. That's not necessarily the case here. You can find the biggest talent in the smallest showroom. I totally agree. They are the ones with most money to spend on advertisement, but not they are not always the best for you is this living the dream i mean here we are sat in las vegas on a sunny sunday afternoon there's no better place really to be doing this that is at this level i suppose for you this is it because from here you can fly anywhere you can do these special shows i know you're working tonight tomorrow um it's a great place to be yeah i love it and vegas has always been my dream destination and i've been living here for a long long time and yes i'm living the dream i'm very blessed to be here and be the only one doing a sleight of hand magic show probably the most successful sleight of hand magic show in the history of vegas we've been running for more than three and a half years and yeah i i, I, I wouldn't change it we should give a mention to Nathan, who people probably know best from America's Got Talent because that really gave him his break. And he's here uh, at four o'clock. You do the pre-show at three o'clock and then you get to do um, stuff within his show as well. I mean, it's an ensemble, that show. And again, that is spectacular. So you go from seeing you doing this incredibly technical, brilliant stuff, close, um, sort of close contact, and then you get to see the show afterwards. So, I mean, it is a great value ticket. Uh, I totally agree with you. And, you know, it's funny. Nathan and I, we met over 20 years ago in a magical convention and our dream back then was to perform in Vegas and now we're doing it together and yes we understand that what we do is totally different and it complements each other so when we decide to combine our shows it just made both of us stronger and he does a great job so. what I love about magic and I'm always a big promoter of it and I love magicians I find the whole medium fascinating is that kids from three can sit there and just be as amazed as a guy in his 80s because we just want to see that thing disappear that thing reappear that card go from there to there it, I don't think we're ever going to get bored of that no Xbox no TV no new medium will ever take over that intrigue because that's what you guys do you play with us especially here in vegas we get people from all over the world and sometimes my audience don't speak in english uh, and if they don't speak english or spanish uh, they still can understand what i'm doing because it's so visual and yes they know if something is floating if something disappear or reappear uh, and it awakes the little kid inside you so that's what i think magic appeals to all ages and will never go out of style and of course this is a celebrity town there's stars in every day to come and see you is that always humbling is that nerve-wracking how do you feel about it well it's a great experience and sometimes it could be nerve-wracking especially when you know ahead of time like a couple of weeks ago we had uh, nicole kidman and keith orvin coming to the show and yeah of course it adds an extra pressure sometimes after you finish you find out oh such and such was in the audience i'm like well at least uh, it's over you know it's better not knowing um, I think so. I think so. Because then um, I can be myself. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not thinking about that in the back of my head. But it doesn't matter. Well, you need to write this name down. Armando Vera is the guy here at the Sax Theatre. Tuesday through Sunday, Armando Vera is here doing this wonderful intimate magic. It is so clever and talented. And anybody like you who dedicates their life to this needs a round of applause. Because, I mean, it is a vocation. This is not something that you've bought in a shop and then you can just bring it here and do it. I mean, it is hours and hours and hours of practice. It's been taking him over the 20 years uh, yeah to 
to be here. And yeah, if you can go to armandoveramagic.com and then you can find all the information about the show and how to find tickets and we would love to see you here. Thank you so much for your time. It's great talking to you and good luck with the show. I'm looking forward to it. About 15 minutes you'll be doing it, won't you? Yeah, that's right. Let's do it.